When a player engages with a game like ours, one of the primary goals from a development and design standpoint is to let them play improvisationally. The way that we allow for so much player freedom, the play your way philosophy as we like to call it, is that your game will inevitably be a hybrid. All movements are linked. Everything has a purpose. It's all connected, you see. Because you allow the player to do whatever he wants, he needs to be able to sneak, he needs to be able to fight, he needs to be able to steal, to look through keyholes, climb, anything the player can imagine. We try to give the player enough flexible verbs, basically, and whenever possible we give them non-combat actions that just let them play at their own pace. It's not just about going left, right, over the top of the building, possessing a fish and swimming along in the river. All of those crazy things you can do, using combat or stealth or being very violent or not killing anyone. It's not just about that. It's uh, just the moment to moment, the feeling of when something happens as a direct result of your actions. It's your experience. For instance, uh, we see players arriving in front of a firing squad in the street and some of them just walk right past it. Some other people are like, is there loot to steal? And some other people approach it like morally, hey, what did these people do exactly? I think I'm gonna defend them. We are really attached to our character because we meet them in a lot of situations. We attached a lot of attention to create characters that feel real and from this city. Dishonored 2 is not just about the depth of the world and the atmosphere of the setting. It's really a stealth game. Compliance is mandatory. You can either use the stealth a little bit to like sneak up on somebody and take them out or you can try to play the game without anyone seeing you at all. Clearly, stealth is a key pillar of Dishonored, and it's still, of course, a key pillar of Dishonored too. For instance, Shadow Walk, you can take this like shadowy, inky form and use it as a, a stealth power, but it can also be used to kill people. But we've added many more non-lethal options as well. Drop assassination was very popular before, but now you can land and knock them out. We've added a combat choke that allows you not only to like break out of combat and non-lethally subdue somebody, but you can also use it to drag them around, use them as a human shield, throw them at an enemy. Uh, so there are just many more options just in the basics of combat and uh, subduel. I'm not sure I'd call it mercy. If you just want the cathartic experience of chopping dudes' heads off and shooting them in the chest, uh, you know, dropping on them from the top of a building, taking out as many corrupt guards and aristocratic weasels as you want, Dishonored can definitely be approached that way. For Dishonored 1, we had the outsider mark you, giving you supernatural powers. Burns. Inside. When the outsider offers you his mark, this time in Dishonored 2, you could say no. No. I never asked for your help, and I don't need it now. What does it mean for you? It means that you won't have any power throughout the game. And for us, level designer, it means that you should be able to do everything that the other guys could do with the powers. Sometimes it's more difficult, but at the end of the day, you can finish the game without any power. What are you waiting for? What's going on here? It might sound pretty counterintuitive, as a designer, uh, you build all those like fun, uh, original, sometimes very complicated to actually implement systems. And then you include in your game an option to, you know, lock them away? Why? No. Whatever you're offering, I can make my own way. That's, I think, because we are confident that our core gameplay is interesting enough. And we are confident that the player who makes that choice wants that kind of experience. He wants to be a human being among human beings and feel like he's the best. Like, he wants to be Batman and not Superman. We have players who play for the story. We have players who play because they have stealth simulation, because they think Emily's cool or Corvo's cool. Some players move through the game like a shadow without leaving anyone disturbed, and other players leave a big trail of blood and body parts.